hey, I, I didn't see you there, which is kind of weird because you are over a hundred people already and... Okay, so editing Nina here. Um, <laughs> this video was supposed to go up on Tuesday, so June 1st, but I didn't make it because I was very caught up with work and just some personal stuff. So this is going up today and we already hit 200 subs. Like, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Um, I was actually going to be putting up a Let's Play today, but I am filming that right now. So that will come out next week. But also I was thinking about maybe doing speed builds on Tuesday for like larger builds and then we can do Let's Plays on Fridays. Yeah, sorry for my intermission, but I will roll the rest of the speed build now. Have fun and thank you again for 200 subs. I love you guys. So thank you for everyone who is new to my channel. Hey, hey, my name is Lina and in today's video we are going to be tackling a villager yard and to be specific Daisy's villager yard. I was initially going to base this build off of a little garden shack but it's kind of just an overgrown villager yard again. <laughs> but I do love how this comes out. And this is the area that we will be working in today. Now let me show you my map real quick because I did terraform a bunch before this video just because I wanted to get some houses down and get an idea of the layout for this um, villager portion of my island because I want everything to be very natural and uninhabited. Um, so uh, I am trying to focus most of my villager houses around the same area and yeah, so without further ado, let's just get right into it. Now I'm starting off by giving Daisy a little garden patch kind of where she will later grow some pumpkins and I did try to use the light dirt and like the, the just the normal in-game dirt path but I do end up exchanging it for the dark dirt just because I feel like it went a lot better with all the wooden items that I will later be using. Now to the left side we have this little waterfall and stream which kind of goes through the entire neighborhood and I wanted it to tie the whole thing together as if the fairies kind of built their houses along the river so that they could always have fresh water and stuff. And yeah, Daisy has this very cute sunken area because she does have my favorite house and I wanted this one to be in a very special place where I could get very creative with it. So I thought this terraforming around it would be perfect for that. To the left we are kind of creating, I don't really know what this is, I just played around with some items the other day just to find some new combinations and I noticed that the wooden low table and the um, turkey day decorations fit perfectly together because the little lacy blanket underneath the turkey day decorations fit perfectly with the shape of the wood low table and for some reason I just really wanted to incorporate it in this build so that's what we did and then we just worked our way around it I then went ahead and added this little log bench with some items and I love the little elephant watering can. I just wish you could turn it sideways without the little elephant eyes on it but I do think it's very cute so I end up putting that there anyways. I also added those little antique boots because I just love the look of them.
yeah then I as I said I went ahead and exchanged this little pumpkin patch for the duck dirt so that it went a lot better with the fencing that we're going to be placing on top of it in a second and I wanted this house to just feel very tucked in and also wanted the pumpkin patch to kind of still create a pathway where people would be led right to the house behind it and Freckles and Melba's house are not going to stay there. I think I'm going to be amiiboing Aurora and Olive into these two houses because they just are perfect or Punchy. I, ha I will be moving all of them to my island but I'm not sure which house is going to go where exactly or which, which villager is going to go where exactly which is why I still have my previous villagers in there um yes and then i continued with a similar pathing technique than i did for the castle speed build i uploaded on tuesday because i think this looks like it's supposed to be a pathway and it also looks kind of elegant due to the white cobblestone look but it also if you place it very sparsely and because the stones are kind of far apart for a cobblestone pathing it just looks very natural and it just gives me some fairy vibes you know <laughs> So I tried to experiment with that a bit more so that it looks very nice and I, I gave Daisy my island representative's little mailbox because I thought it just fit perfectly here and the castle in my opinion didn't really need a mailbox and it didn't really fit the vibe so yeah. And then we just went ahead and worked on the actual pumpkin patch, which is only going to be in <laughs> which is only going to include three pumpkin plants, but I think it looks very cute. And whenever I do the final tour, you will see the final pumpkin plants. So there will be actual pumpkins. And I decided that for this build, I did mention that in a previous video that I was going to be including or might start including some other colors other than blue and purple. And I'm later going to play around with the idea of maybe incorporating even some purple flowers in this build but it, I felt like it just messed up the whole very cohesive color scheme in this build. So for the final thing, I just stuck to yellows, blues, whites, and some soft greens. And for the final tour, I also, I'm not sure if I did, but I was going to exchange some of the white mums for some green mums because I am still training for them and growing some more because I don't have that many at the moment. I just thought I would expand my color palette for this island a bit with some of the villager yards and I think this very bright but still light in a way color scheme felt very fresh and also whimsical and fairy-like to me and this does have a touch of sprinkle I think even if I do include a lot of blues but I do think it still fits with my general fairy enchanted theme especially if you will see the finished product in the end and I I will also be adding tons and tons of star fragments everywhere probably in the end but you know I need to get my hands on some more because I don't have that many at the moment um yeah <laughs> And then I, I layered this little flimsy shovel in front of the fencing because I felt like it kind of looked like it was leaning against the fencing and I love that idea because it gave this whole garden hut shag kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know, I just thought it looked very um, garden-y. <laughs> I have no words today, I'm... Uh, yeah, I just recorded two other voiceovers and I am a bit, um, uh, yeah, I'm lacking words today. Um, bear with me. <laughs> I also think the thing which brings this whole build together is kind of that I tried to really balance out the different colors around this build. So I have some blues to the left, some blues to the right, and I try to space them out kind of evenly, but not symmetrical so that it still feels natural, if that makes sense. And I did try to add tiny little details here and there just to make it feel more whimsical. So I did that little watering can and the little plant seed bag on the stool which I turned around and the little ducky, the boots, the one single pumpkin sprout thingy.
and I really made sure to use many flowers but still have the path quite visible as it is very sparsely placed and I do want my island to still be navigable. And then I added this tiny, tiny little cedar tree and the large young hardwood to make this feel a bit more tucked in. And I will probably add some more trees in front of it whenever I get to the house that is placed in front of it because there's another villager house, which I also have not made my mind up about who's actually going to be living there in the end. And now for the cliff top in front of Daisy's house, I had to adjust my terraforming a bit because I did terraform that previous to this build, as I said, so I wasn't exactly sure how I would decorate the whole thing and I will always need to adjust my terraforming. I just do that before I start a build. Like whenever my island layout is kind of fresh and like a blank canvas, I like to play around with the terraforming because that just helps me to get ideas and yeah I, I like to flatten the whole thing to get a blank canvas but then I need to get some structure down to help me think of a layout because if, if, if it's just blank my brain kind of just goes blank so yeah I will always adjust my terraforming even if I did something previous to a speed build so you guys will probably always see me terraform in some shape or way so yeah and then I also added this little pumpkin, I'm not sure what it's called, is it the pumpkin or the, is it the spooky lantern set, I think? The two pumpkins with the hay bale. And then I also added the little hay bed to the very front of Daisy's villager yard to, again, balance the two sides of the pathing. Like, we have one hay bed to the right side of the path, one to the left, and those also bring in the yellow again. And then in that little pumpkin patch, I also added a little garden faucet, which I always usually use the either the brick version of the garden faucet or the dark wood garden faucet. And I have never used the white one, but it just fits perfectly with Daisy's house. It just has the exact color scheme as Daisy's house. So it looks as it's kind of screwed to the wall if it wasn't as far apart as the game wants it to be. <laughs> And yeah, I also add that little, um, I think it's the grasshopper that gives you the little wooden braid thingy. And I also added a zen cushion with a little seedling on top and then just dropped some more flat mushrooms. And then we moved on to the cliff top again, which I tried to keep the design kind of flat so it wouldn't block off the way of Daisy's villager yard because I obviously don't want all the design to not be visible. <laughs> And I think my footage just cut off at some point because I will later be adding a clothesline there, but there's a weird custom design. I think it's a rock custom design, which you will see in a second. And I did exchange that and I did some more designing on top of the cliff, but for some reason that footage is gone. So you just see the rock clothesline. And yeah, then that wraps up the build for today. I'm going to leave you now with a montage of the finished product. If you enjoyed this video, I would very much appreciate it if you like and subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you here. And yeah, take care of yourself. Until next time and bye bye.